every popular song sounds the same. Here's why. That's the title of this video. We'll put it in the link in the description. But there's a specific segment of this video that we want you guys to hear. Check this out. Scientists have studied 464,000 songs and found that both melodies and sounds of instruments are becoming much more similar. Songs are also becoming shorter because of this, and streaming platforms are prioritizing those shorter songs, mainly because shorter songs are less likely to be skipped. And even if we disregard the studies that I just mentioned, you don't really need one to see that the majority of popular music is painfully similar in its respective genres. I believe a lot of this is due to the fact that when record labels gained back their influence after briefly losing it, they began developing technology that would make them even better at promoting generic popular music. And from a business standpoint, it makes sense that a label would want to put out safe music, music that they know people will like. In the past two decades, labels have even acquired technology that they can use to analyze music and predict what songs will be hits. They can use services such as Hit Predictor or Shazam to see what songs will blow up. Apparently, Hit Predictor was able to predict 48 out of the top 50 radio hits in 2013. There are actually even entire companies such as Next Big Sound, which are dedicated to analyzing music and finding the next big sound. Previously, executives at record labels would just make these decisions based on their gut, but now they can rely on this data. And you're probably thinking that if labels keep pumping out this generic music, people will eventually get tired of it. And while that may be true for some people, science says it actually is for the majority. In a study done by Columbia University in 2006, they showed some people music websites with a bunch of songs and told them to download their favorites. Some sites had rankings of the most popular songs and some didn't. It showed that people who saw the rankings were more likely to download the popular songs. They then did a second experiment where they did the same thing, but this time they sent out websites with the actual download statistics and then some websites with fake download statistics. The experiment proved again that believing that a song is more popular made people oops, made people more likely to download it. Another study done in 2011 shows that the brain produces dopamine when people hear songs that they have played and heard before. So essentially what this all means is that a label can have teams of people working on making a boring song. They can put the song onto the streaming services and manipulate it so it gets more popular. You hear it over and over again and you end up liking it and boom, you have a chart topping Hot 100 number one song and you're rich and you're famous and the label's making tons of money. And for all those reasons, that's all it takes. Hurry. Take that information and go get rich, people. He said some shit, man. Man, he he, he said something that hit me, man. You know, with the the whole the dopamine release when people hear familiar music, mm -hmm. and that makes me think of um, you know, it's one of those things where, like artists may notice it. Like, why are you like all oh, all these artists and audio files? All oh, all these songs sound the same, yep. but then like the general consumer isn't thinking about that, or if they do, like they're glad. You know, based on what he's saying, they're like, hey, like this does kind of sound like the last song, and I like that last song, so I should like this one, you know, man? Let's, let's keep this vibe going. Um, so I agree, man. I agree. I agree with everything he said. Well, first of all, shout out to Matty Balls. Um, I really don't know you like that, but I love this video that I, that, um, I got put on to you by. Keep on creating and creating stuff like this so y'all can check him out on YouTube. But that's a couple of things here. One... He talked about the idea of people downloading from the uh, music and being more likely to download music based on it already having streams, right? Or interaction. Social proof, right? We already know this and it works. Mm -hmm. And many people want to hear that again and think, well, oh man, people just want to listen to what's popular and, and they don't have any taste. Nobody cares about underground artists versus big artists. I implore you guys go past the surface level. Not just about that. I know that's always the first thought and way to go. But typically the the bitter thought is in the is in the actual answer. Right? That thought that makes you bitter, like, oh man, they just don't appreciate. That's usually more your personal feelings and ego yeah. versus the actual answer. Yeah. Like what it really comes down to, because you can't use that. Like you can't actually utilize that and uh, you're not in control. What puts you in control is realizing what it comes down to, and that comes down to convenience, saving time. How many times can I talk about the fact that we're hit with so much information time and time again, and we're just trying to figure out how to make the best decisions for our lives possible? That's it. Everybody is like, what's the best person to date? What's the best school to go to? What's the best job to work? How can I make more money faster and and do it at, with less risk, right? 
for entertainment, how can I watch the best movie that I'm going to enjoy instead of wasting my time? And how can I spend as little time possible listening to it? I've been looking for it. Ask a friend. Look at what? Reviews and shit like that. And streams, they're like reviews. You just assume because it's been listened to that, that other people must like it. So it must not be trash completely which means I'm not going to waste my time by giving it a chance, mm-hmm. right? Because if I listen to something with zero, I don't know. That's that's a risk. And it is a risk. Even us who, who like are in this and we're all, always looking for new artists and stuff to hear. You go on to a smaller artist profile, but hey, this his top song has 10,000 streams. The rest of the songs have 200. You're going to be like, all right, let me listen to this 10,000. Just what the people saw here. Yeah, let me see what they saw in this one versus the other, yeah. right? So it's a natural thing for us to do. It's a natural thing to say, you know what? I want Amazon. Let me buy this product that has 3000 reviews versus that seller with the product that has zero reviews. Mm-hmm. That sounds kind of risky. Even if I can get it returned because Amazon is pretty decent with returns. I'm going to have to buy it and be disappointed. Then send it back. All right. It's just a risk. <laughs> That's all it is. So we have to like, kind of just continuously come to grips with that. Uh, we're all doing that same thing in many spaces and places. And the only way to opt out of that is to be consciously working against it. And nobody's going to be doing that 24 seven. Mm. Uh, even the underground artists themselves are still doing that. Like I said, you could be looking at your favorite artist and be like, dang, this is the new album. This song has a lot of stats. Hey, you might not have time. I'm like, Let me just hear one real quick mm-hmm. to kind of get a pulse of what the rest of it's like. This is the one that, uh, like this is this is the one that has all the views, so let me check that one out. Mm-hmm. Right. So look, it is what it is on that side. And then he made another statement. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created, and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself. Back to the video. Um, Talk about songs getting shorter. Songs getting shorter which is another thing, yeah, improving the, the light list for to be listened to, which ha- helps boost the algorithm, which of course, of course, ultimately gets more awareness and leads to it being a hit. That was another one, but it was the other thing that you addressed too that he talked about the end. Uh, when he said, um, science has shown that we get a dopamine hit when we hear yes. songs we heard before. There it is, right? What do you think that comes from? Why do you think that is? I think that people are lazy and we like to enjoy things that have been enjoyable to us before because sometimes learning that some, to figure out if something else is enjoyable for you is work and a risk, like you said, right? Yeah. So I could take the risk. Maybe I like this new sound, maybe I don't. Or I can just lean really heavy towards the thing that I know I already enjoy and I already like. Most people are gonna pick that one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what, that's what I was thinking. It's just like, we heard it, we like it, we know we like it, I wanna hear more of this. I can see that from two perspective. It was like, yes, I'm about to experience something I've already decided I liked. Mm-hmm. So it's cool. I don't have to go through that period with my guard up, wondering if I'm going to like it, observe actively. That's real energy for me to pay attention. Yeah. Oh, shit. And I might not like it. Right. We're Wasting. constantly working to not pay attention. So as a quick aside, do you know why time seems to move faster when we're adults than it does when we're children? Because we pay more attention to it. We pay less attention. To time? When we get older, yeah. I feel like I pay more attention to time. That's cool. <laughs> we pay more attention to time, but that's that actually proves the point further. Because when you're paying more attention to time, time would actually move slower. Right? It's because we're not paying as much attention because we've seen so many things and information is so 
accustomed to, we just move. And because we're, we're, we're constantly trying to figure out how can I make less decisions? So we fall into these habits, mm. right? I already know what I'm going to put on. I, have to, I don't have to think about brushing my teeth, right? I don't have to think about all these different things. So we make decisions ahead of time as we build these habits. That's all it basically is, right? So we use less energy and we're more aware of the world and the environment. Mm. Kids, everything is new. So you're paying a whole lot of attention to everything and you're consuming and then you're being stimulated. And when you're paying attention to something, time moves slower. So if you think about, you probably haven't done this since you were a kid, but this is a clear example of how, no, if you pay attention to time and move slower, when you wait for your motherfucking class to be over and you just keep looking back at the clock. Oh yeah. And it's still like, hey bro, this is taking forever. This is the longest five minutes of my life. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like we all been there in school and man, shoot, we've been there and working in some places and times in life, right? Time moves slower when you're paying attention to it. Things move slower when you focus on it. But as an adult, to prove that same point about new experiences, when you go on vacation, an extended vacation, you have all these new experiences and you're in a new place, it feels like you go into this time warp, mm -hmm. right? And then you go back to your same world pace and then things move like fast again because you're already accustomed to it. You're not getting all these new experiences so the days don't feel as long. So with that in mind, right, what was that last point you said again? I was uh, the dopamine, the dopamine rush, yeah, dopamine, right? Right. Yep. So all of that stuff interrelates because, like, nostalgia is a very, very real thing for us, mm -hmm. right? New experiences is also a very real thing. However, new experiences take more time and energy, and when you're moving at your pace, oftentimes, unless you're deciding, I need to vacate or or set aside time. We're just looking for the thing that takes less energy. So I would love to get some, a nostalgia kit because I've already decided I like this. I already have an environment and this entire experience that came along with it. So I can get that same feeling without having to go through the inconvenience of experiencing that again. It's like I get the experience without the investment. Yeah. That's all nostalgia is. Yeah, all the gold without the risk. I get all the gold without the risk. So well, yeah, I'm I'm back in that environment when I was listening to this song and I was at that party without having to go to the party. Without having to have the risk of somebody pulling out a gun at any moment and me having to dip and look at the wall. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's all all nostalgia is, but that's one of the primary like attractions to nostalgia. You get the benefits without the risk or without the investment. So us getting that dopamine rush to me is no surprise when you do that with um, these songs, right? But I think there's a, a good and bad to that, obviously, because it's one thing when we're talking about nostalgia and something you genuinely decided that you love, right? Or something that you already decided that you liked. And now it's like, oh man, good, I already like this. I'm happy that, that it's on, I'm hearing it. But what about the stuff that you've heard, not because you liked, you heard it because you heard it. You heard it because some marketer got that shit bumping around you at all times. And that's just it. <laughs> what do you do then? It's like, now I like it more because I heard it again. Even though I didn't really like it to, to start with. I've had songs like that. Well, that's the game, bro. That and That's the game. The Even game. as a marketer, I know that there's songs that I liked them more the more I heard them. And, and there's some that like legitimately, oh, I just, I was just slipping. I, I really didn't give it the due and the attention that I should have. But there's a lot of songs that I like or I, I or I grew more fondness of because I heard it more times and then eventually, especially, it became nostalgic. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even listening to this song like that in that year, but now it reminds me of that year. And that year was a good-ass year. So damn, this song now almost kind of feels like a good song. Mm -hmm. It's a different way in to somebody's psyche. You know, Ryan Leslie did that shit to Diddy, right? No, where, where, one of his songs? No. Well, yes, Ryan Leslie's song. So that was how he got signed. Diddy, somebody who knows music, obviously, has been a part of creating some real good music. Ryan Leslie 
I think he knew Diddy's DJ, right? So everywhere Diddy would go, he would get his song playing. Oh, uh, okay. And Diddy heard it so much, eventually he's like, who is this guy? Yeah. Because to him, it now feels like this song is everywhere. Everybody's fucking with it. Because it's not like I'm saying, hey, play this song. So why does everybody keep playing this song? It must be some kind of hit, like something that's on the charts right now. And who is this guy? Eventually, you know, him and Ryan link up. He finds out who it is, and then he gets signed to Diddy, and Diddy takes his girl. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Man, bro, that was a plot twist. <laughs> great. I feel like great story. You know what I'm saying? Great lesson in there somewhere. Probably a couple lessons in there somewhere, honestly. You know what I'm saying? But Probably shout out to the DJ, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the DJ. I didn't make that story up. And that's just that, that's just the word on the street there and from from people involved. But anyway, 